Hi, Kevin Tharp here. Today we're going to be talking about uh, understanding the CSS cascade because this really is a foundational element that you need to understand if you're going to do modern web design. Uh, so I'm going to make my way to the lessons area here and I'm going into this CSS cascade style sheets, understanding the cascade. And I'm going to choose that first option in there. What we have here is uh, information about the cascade and What we have here is information about the cascade that kind of demonstrates uh, what all goes into it. So uh, the first thing you need to understand is that the closer you get to the content, the more the rules will apply. They will overrule the previous thing. So the furthest thing away is when you start out with your browser. Your browser has a default style sheet and we're going to go through all of these so that you can see them. But you start with the browser with the default style sheet. That's the furthest thing from the content. It's the first thing that's applied and if nothing else overrules that, that's the rule that applies throughout the entire process. So we've got the default and then we've got an external style sheet and an external style sheet is when you have a link to another uh, style sheet from within a website and if I go to view the page source here that's easy to see when you go into uh, inside the head tag and you're looking in there you will see these link references right there to style sheets that means that there is an external style sheet at play and and that's the first level here that overrides what the browser is naturally going to do the next link is embedded and it isn't seen on this page but if there was an embedded styles they would be located inside of this head as well and I can show you that in a couple minutes uh, you'll be able to see that uh, and so that overrides an external style sheet because it's getting closer to the content itself and then the third thing of course is inline which is when you have styles that are actually uh, laid out with the element that they are um, manipulating. So let's dig into this. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to float down here to uh, the, default, the default presentation attributes. So I, I come to this page here and it is just a basic here is some information with different elements that can be added, content elements that can be added to this page. And it includes things like a heading level 1, heading 2, 3, 4, etc. And so what's happening here is the style sheet that comes native with the browser, and in this case I happen to be using Firefox, is presenting this information to us in the way that they've decided it looks good uh, with their browser. If I open that with another browser, we're going to find that it operates or looks a little bit differently. So I'm going to pull up another browser here. And it's going to be pretty close. Uh, the content is going to be displayed fairly similarly. And I don't know right off the top uh, where exactly it's going to be different. But it is, um, it is going to display somewhat differently. It might be a different font. It might be uh, any number of things. But each browser has got its own set of style sheets or default style sheets that are applied to it. And that is what is going to display unless you get to the point where you have overridden those style sheets. So let's look at that next. So I've gone into this default browser style sheet. The next thing that I want to do is I want to uh, get rid of those styles. So I'm going to go to a page that has uh, a reset style sheet applied. And a reset style sheet is just a set of rules that change, uh, they come in and they introduce at that embedded level. And you notice what happens to our headings level over here. Uh, whereas before we had that formatting or presentation applied to them, when we run the reset style sheet, then it, it gets rid of those. So if we open this, you'll see that there's this reset style sheet. And uh, this happens to be a public domain style sheet. and um, there is a newer one, but I haven't applied it to that yet. That it looks more at HTML5. Uh, but this was one of the early uh, reset style sheets. And what it does is it goes through and it does things like get rid of 
uh, borders, alignment, padding, uh, margins, etc. So that everything is displaying no matter which browser you come into, it's got the same set of rules that are being applied. And so uh, that is the the reset style sheet and you're going to want to get in the habit of using one of those because you really don't have full control of your page until you start doing that that said once you've done that you've got to create rules for all types of presentation so there's the positive and the negative of all of that so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to a designed set of CSS rules uh, that the designer has developed and so um, You'll notice that um, looking at the code here, there are, uh, and this is just showing you the code from the background. What it's happened is there's a reset style sheet applied, and then there's a base style sheet, which allows you to add. You're first off, you're allowed to use more than one style sheet. What the reset does is sets it all back to nothing. The base starts building that back up. Okay, so the next thing that we do is we go to um, looking at embedded style sheets. And this is a, a page that has embedded styles as well as externals. So we've, we've already done the external style sheets. That's what we were talking about before with the reset and the CSS. The next thing in the cascade is to go to embedded styles. And here you see those embedded styles. And again, if I go to look at the... Uh, source for this page what you're gonna see is up here in the head I've got those links to the style sheets but then I've got these style elements too so the way that the cascade flows is that you've got the default before it gets here once it gets to this page it encounters the reset style sheet and then it uh, encounters the base style sheet and then it encounters these individual styles so each time it encounters something that overrides whatever rules uh, had been applied to that now in this case the only s rule that's being applied is a heading level one color so that's the only thing that is going to change from this base style sheet and when we look at it that's what we've got here is that that color uh, for the the color is pound 600 uh, and that that's that sort of maroonish color that's there now the next thing that we can do moving further down that cascade and uh, if we go back uh, I'll show you the cascade again and how we have been making our way so we started with the default we went to the external style sheets where we introduced the reset style sheet and then the base and then we went to the embedded where we had the H1 now uh, what we want to look at is the inline and we're also going to use compound selectors in this case so in the last case there was uh, we had the idea or, or we had the h1 that we had applied the rule to which is shown right here h1 color of 600 now what we're going to do is we're going to add to that additional rules so that in this case we're looking at a compound rule and the compound rule is if I have an ID of main body and that's what that pound sign means is that if there's an ID of main body and a header level one or a header level one inside of the ID of main body then what it does is applies the color of pound uh, zero zero F so what that gives us is this blue colored H1 because both of these are in the main body both of those apply uh, now you'll notice that up here Kevin W. Tharp is still an H1 but it's not inside the main body so it's retained that maroonish color that's designated there for all H1s however since and this is an H1 as well as is this down here uh, those have turned to blue because they are within the main body and they've been given that cut so if we look at the code again
then this is what we find. Inside of the body, the header is not inside the main body. So there's that H1. That's where the Kevin W. Tharp comes from. And that's uh, this section up here. So we've got this that applying there um, up here, and that's inside the header. Now the next thing that we encounter is this H1 down here. And when we encounter that, you'll notice that we are inside the section with the ID of main body and then the H1. So we've got an H1 inside of main body, and that's why it applied that rule. So it's got those compound selectors. Okay, so then when we go further into this, the next thing that you see is down here where we're doing inline rules, uh, which is the very end of that, that cascade. This is the, the closest thing to the content, and in fact, you'll notice that in this case, it is part of the content, and it uses this span class in the middle of the word, and what we're manipulating here is this heading two, and you'll notice that uh, we've got an H2, uh, then we've got the HE, which are the words, and inside the middle of the word we've got a span with the property of span class, or I'm sorry, sample class, and that only applies to the letters ADI. So we've set this as a sample class, and then what we've got up here is a rule that says if you've got something called a sample class, then make it that sort of green color. And so that allows us to uh, go all the way to the end of the cascade and um, give the most specific rule so that we're able to uh, affect an individual letter or element in the page and that completes the um, the functioning of the cascade. And just for final review, again that last bit was the inline content. That's where we affected just part of the content uh, with the rule. We have embedded, which means that they are inside of the page. So the styles themselves are listed inside the head, uh, head section of the page. The external means that they are, the content comes from a style sheet that is linked to the page. And the furthest from the content is the default from the browser. And that's going to use the rules that are set up by the browser to make automatically. And we use a reset style, sh style sheet to override those uh, as a general rule. Okay, so that takes care of understanding the cascade. That's fundamental for you to understand how that cascade is so that you can get um, creative in the way that you apply those to your websites.